Robert, let's kick off with a look at the technicals because we've got the market sitting at a four-month high, 3,429 points, gaining for a second straight day. Equity turnover up on the day. What is your sense as to where the market's going from here? Uh, good morning. Sorry, you're a bit unclear. Uh, but uh, if I can get it, uh, you asked about the market and you, the direction it's headed from here. Well, we've seen it going up in the past couple of days we've seen the index move up to levels which were witnessed earlier last year so maybe looking forward i guess we also have a lot of activity from kenya airways that should actually uh, boost more uh, demand for the other stocks for people who look at them as alternatives to investing in the rights issue in terms of uh, that rights issue which is of course underway at the moment kenya Airways seeking to raise 20.7 billion uh, shillings. How's that uh, been progressing so far? There are only two weeks left of that rights issue. Has there been strong demand that's come through? Or what is your sense as to the overall subscription that we're going to see for those rights? Well, two weeks is still quite a lot of time because we are one third way through. It's running for about three weeks. Um, I guess what, what people really worry about here is um, uh, pr uh, sh uh, shareholder value. And I guess the issue here is you're introducing 1.47 billion uh, extra shares into the market. You, you've got to worry about uh, earnings per share dilution. Uh, that has actually put investors uh, on, a, on a risk of us position. And most of the people who look at this stock are actually looking at it for the long term. They're looking at the 10-year uh, plan, which has been spelt out by Kenya Airways and uh, which shows a lot of promise, 150, 115 new routes, uh, destinations. We also have promise of their cargo lines. So I guess those who are getting in right now may be pushed in in the coming weeks by these uh, promises which we find in their 10-year plan. Let's look at that stock from a long-term value and hidden value that could be unlocked in it. Uh, sitting with a net asset value of 49.43 a share, the share price way below where that is at this point in time. Uh, and it's, it's looking at an earnings per share forecast of 1 shilling 47. So even though you've got this dilutionary impact of the 1.4 billion shares, surely from a longer-term perspective, there's un value to be unlocked by investing right now. Yes, actually, it's a matter of balancing the, the options and uh, seeing whether the, the pros outweigh the cons. Right now, actually, my colleagues and I have been looking at it. We've given it a uh, projected uh, EPS of about 4.2. Uh, and uh, I think uh, looking at the share price right now, about 14 shillings, we have also projected the same in our three-year model to be about um, uh, 35 in, in, in that time. So I guess looking at it from, um, from that perspective, from a long-term perspective, it is indeed a good stock to, to look at uh, getting into. Yeah, let's move on to the banking sector. Uh, banking sector receiving a lot of attention yesterday. Uh, in terms of the high interest rate regime, we know that mortgage spending is slowing down. That a concern for, for most of the banks. Uh, but in terms of uh, SMME lending, it looks like a lot of banks are starting to receive credit from, uh, from development institutional banks, the European Investment Bank, uh, extending uh, 7.3 billion shillings to cooperative bank and 2.1 billion shillings to housing finance. Uh, what are your views on, on the extension of this credit to them and how that's likely to impact the type of trade we see around those stocks today? I think it's a beautiful, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful move. And I, I think right now the major concern is access to credit. We have these SMEs, we have a pro proliferation of SMEs in the country. Uh, most of them, of course, start small. And uh, given the currency situation, given inflation rates right now, uh, risk profiles are usually looked at more critically than before. And for, for the banks to actually give uh, mortgage financing, uh, they, they actually have to, to be sure that the money they give does not end up as a bad debt. So uh, to see this uh, new move, uh, these monies are actually going to go a long way in uh, boosting the SME sector. And uh, the, the onward lending actually is a form of revenue for these companies like Cooperative Bank, we have Equity Bank. So I guess it, it is a good move. 
Are we likely to see more multilateral lenders extending credit to the banking sector in Kenya and perhaps the East African region? Uh, is it attractive to be, to be lending money to the banks given the way their banking and their funds are, are allocated? Uh, well, it may not be that attractive at this given point in time because, as I mentioned before, we have high risk. Um, especially we have uh, the issue of inflation, which has really beaten the economy. So when you look at that, uh, it may have some people shy away from pouring in funds uh, into, into this economy. So I guess uh, looking at it that way, we can say it, it's a 50-50 thing. Again, we are looking at the point in time we are in the political calendar, an election year. This may be a few concerns for anyone wishing to invest in the country. In the meantime, East African Portland cements a suspension has been lifted after 60 days of, be, of trade being suspended there and really making a quiet return to the market. Uh, what are your views on, on the fact that there weren't really any trades on that stock yesterday? Are we likely to see uh, activity perhaps uh, pick up today? Uh, well, it's, it's, norm, it's normal, as expected uh, from um, a stock that has been suspended coming back into the market. People are a bit risk of us. They want to see the trends before committing to any real trades. Um, I recall seeing some offers at as high as 78 and bids as low as 30 shillings. That's a big gap. And I guess before uh, the market, uh, the price discovers itself, we may uh, be in the market, the, Portland may be in the market for a couple of days. Uh, looking also at the fundamentals of the company, the company is barely out of loss territory. Two years ago, they made a loss of about 200 million. So fundamentally, again, it may not be quite the most sound stock to rush into right now. And uh, also looking at the industry, cement industry, it's not exactly the number one company. We have other competitors which put it at a tight spot like Mombasa Cement. We have. Uh, Bamburi, the veterans, and uh, at the river mining. So I guess they have an uphill task to uh, regain commitment yeah. of the investor. And a lot of issues also with the government shareholding right now, and of course, labor unions and issues around remuneration there. Robert, thank you very much for joining us today on this Friday. Have a great weekend. Robert Manuku is a dealer and analyst at Francis Drummond & Co.